But more and more, I think Americans have a hard time discerning when someone that they see on television is reporting something and when someone they see on television is giving their opinion uh, about something. And that has also become part of the problem because people can't tell you know, what's real and what's not anymore these days. Today on episode 14 of The Silent Struggle, retired police chief David Magnuson. How are you, brother? Doing well. How about yourself? Ah, just great. Nice, nice. And I are joined by South Florida, WIOD AM 610 station and iHeart radio personality, Manny Munoz. I am so honored to have him on the show, mainly because of you, David. You were persistent in getting on. I'm a big fan. I listen religiously. It's a it's a very fair show. It takes both sides, listens up, uh, respects the callers real well. Just a big fan, and it, it's an honor to have Manny here today. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's jump right into it. Let's do it. Welcome, Manny. How are you? I'm doing great. It's an it's an it's my honor to even be on the same screen with you two. Oh man, Thank you're it. too kind. So let, let's talk a little bit about you for the for the viewers that now we're just on. We just went up on Spotify mm-hmm. and progressively going into the others. Um, social media platforms or podcast platforms. So for those of you that don't know Manny Munoz, um, let's talk a little bit about you. You're a South Florida native. You've been on the radio for 30 plus years. Yeah, born and raised here in South Florida. Got into radio by accident, but January uh, coming up next month will be 35 years I've been in radio. Uh, Been at either WIOD or WINZ, the two traditional news talk stations in South Florida for 33 of those 35 years. Uh, And now I'm blessed this this past January, it'll be a year now, uh, I was given my own show from 10 a.m. until 12 noon on on WIOD and have been enjoying that. No small feat. No, that's big time. That's good stuff. Yes. And you were you were the voice, if not for the Hurricanes. Right. I, I I was the producer, the executive producer for the Hurricanes Network uh, back in the 90s, the radio network. Also did some work with the, the Dolphins uh, radio network back in the 90s at WIOD. Uh, covered everything from, you know, uh, Hurricane Andrew in the aftermath uh, where we spent uh, that night on 79th Street there at WIOD, the old wonderful Isle of Dreams studios, uh, to all of us covered the 2000 election recount and and everything that's happened here in South Florida, good and bad, uh, you know, through the 80s and 90s into today. Well, let's jump right into it, Manny. First of all, before we go any farther, thank you for your military service to our country. You as well. And thank both you. of your service to our community. I, I you, you know, I'm a big supporter of law enforcement. Um, and every day I close out the show by telling the listeners, if you happen to see a member of our military, our first responder, or a member of law enforcement, just stop them and let them know you appreciate them. And, and I appreciate both of you. I, I mean that sincerely. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So we've all heard of social media and how it, it, it influences behavior. It, it has mass shooters. We've seen criminal acts. Um, atrocities. But let me ask you, Manny, what do you think the role is or how do you think mainstream media plays into the situation of mental health? Uh, well, I don't think there's any question that the media, especially cable uh, news networks, have have had an enormous part in getting the country to where it is today. The divisions we see not only politically, but I think emotionally and culturally. Um, we are a less civil society, I think, than we've ever been. Uh, we are less accepting of those who are different than us. We're less accepting of anyone who has a different opinion uh, than us these days in our country. And I think, I believe, especially cable news media has uh, to take great blame for that. But news overall, I mean, the way the news media has changed over the last 30 years, I don't think, I think it's undeniable that the media of today is clearly not uh, the media of Walter Cronkite that, you know, we might have been used to or, or Ann Bishop here locally if you grew up down here. And, and, and you remember that from the 70s and the 80s. And I think part of that is because at a certain point, media became a business. It wasn't anymore about covering the news. It was about uh, income. 
and making sure that there were profits coming in. All of a sudden, the, the news part of the of the industry uh, was charged with doing that as well. And you saw things beginning to change because all of a sudden you were programming the news. You weren't just reporting the news. And we've seen that gotten worse and worse. And of course, in the late 90s, you had you know the cable news wars between CNN and, and Fox News. MSNBC got involved in that as well. Um, and, and each side decided that they were going to um, develop and build upon what they viewed as their base, their political base. Uh, and they've both done a very good job at doing that. But in doing that, uh, we've slowly been torn apart. And, and especially that cable media, I believe, does a very good job of looking for ways to, to divide and make us angry at one another, whether it be politically or culturally, or to scare us. Uh, about others in our country, whether it be a different race or whether it be immigrants. Um, and all of that leads to stress, right? We're talking about mental health. Uh, whether we realize it or not, I think we've all changed a lot because of the pandemic. And and you put this all together, and I think it's just been kind of a tidal wave uh, of bad news. And we're surrounded by bad news every day in, in, in the media. Um, there's very little good news that we could report these days, right? We've got yeah. two wars uh, happening in Ukraine and in Israel. We've got another potential conflicts brewing uh, with China in, in the Asia Pacific reason, uh, region. We've got another uh, election in 11 months in this country, and there's uncertainty surrounding all of that. And there's crime and violence, and we're fed that steady diet of those pictures and videos. Uh, it, it makes sense that there are more and more Americans needing mental health uh, assistance. Yeah. yeah. So you've done some research on this a little bit about the opinion media and the impact on on um, mental health in, in this country. Why don't you share your thoughts on well, this? Well, some of it, first of all, it goes back to that that statement that came around the mid-90s, if it, if it bleeds, it leads. But taking a historical look, is, is it more chaotic in this country now than it was maybe in 1968? What's different? I mean, there were protests. Uh, there were assassinations, right? There was a, a fight to see who was going to get the White House. But it, it, it's now it's that constant bombardment. It's constant. It wasn't you're going to get the maybe the afternoon edition or the morning edition mm -hmm. of a newspaper. You're going to watch Brinkley or, you know, or, or Walter Cronkite and get your news there. You're going to be able to sit across the table and disagree. Mm -hmm. Now you sit across the table with this bombardment where you're breaking up families, you're breaking up friendships. Uh, it's gotten to a point now, as as Manny said, you know, your opinions, there's no respect for the other opinion. Mm -hmm. And it deals with that constant, that constant bombardment has to take its toll. You know, Willard Shepard, local TV personality, news personality in South Florida, also a military veteran and and a guy that seems like he's just an overachiever in everything he does. Right. Mm -hmm. He said something that really struck me and he commented about opinion media now that the average person does not know how to, the audience, the audience that is, does not know how to, know how to discern between opinion media yeah. and news reporting, right? And that's where we make the referral references to Walter Cronkite, tremendous news personality, anchorman of, of, of his century, right? Yeah, and you know, back then too, if somebody had an opinion, it would say editorial. We can go locally. John Gar would, you spoke of Ann Bishop. He would do an editorial at the end of his show. I brought up to Willard too. I said, yeah, but the the thing with, with Cronkite's opinion, because he was so respected, he gave it when he said, we can't win in Vietnam. Yeah. And uh, Johnson realized he lost Cronkite. He lost middle America. Within the month, he decided not to run again. Mm -hmm. That had some impact. But now, even those with opinions that you may respect, it's watered down by everybody's opinion. They're not just reporting it. They are the news. But I think the important piece here is what Willard was saying is the comment that people believe if it's coming sure. out of the box, the term, the box, the radio, TV, whatever you get your news from. If it's coming out of the box, then people believe it's true. What well, and, I, and I think part of that is what's, what's happened in the media. I mean, you, you see it clearly that, that too many in the media, even those with integrity, aren't necessarily reporting stories uh, covering both sides evenly, right? And that's what we used to see back in the day. Uh, I can't tell you the number of people back in the 90s and the early 2000s that told me they get their news from Rush Limbaugh. And I had to snicker, Rush was great, but he was an entertainer. 
He wasn't a news person. Um, and I think it's gotten worse and worse where you see these cable networks and they have hosts on there. They have news programs where they cover news stories. But at the same time, those very supposed journalists that are covering those news stories are giving their opinions or making snide remarks about uh, President Biden's uh, comment or what President Trump uh, had said or done. And so they're injecting their personal views, their commentary, their opinion in it. They're not journalists anymore. And was that, was that the draw, sorry, Manny, was that the draw with Alex Jones? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you, you look at what he did. I don't think he ever painted himself as a journalist, but there are people out there that believe what he's saying is the truth. And this is a guy that I, it's been proven in court for, I think, $16 million or whatever it was, uh, the, the, one of the judgments against him, that he is, he's a, a person that deals in conspiracy theories and untruths and attacks on people needlessly. Um, but, but more and more, I think Americans have a hard time discerning when someone that they see on television is reporting something. And when someone they see on television is giving their opinion, uh, about something. And that has also become part of the problem because people can't tell, you know, what's real and what's not anymore these days. Yeah. You know, you made a good point today on, on your show when you say, I just want to open your eyes to see both sides. That that's very responsible. Uh, you know, and, and mm -hmm. you, it's too bad we don't see more of that on a, on a grander national mm -hmm. level because it is so important. Uh, but, you know, there's also the copycats. I mean, let's go back to Mort Downey. He started something. He was, you know, he was what he was. But then everybody started copying his style. Then you had the fights on TV, uh, contrived or not, I don't know. Uh, and I'm going to see who it sure made for good entertainment. It though. was good entertainment, <laughs> but people were, were tuning in thinking that this is real, a, a real, real, real things. And therein lays the problem. And this is where it comes full circle. Those that are hooked into it, they're hooked mm -hmm. on it, much like a drug, much like gambling, much like alcohol. They're hooked onto these things. They grab at every fiber they're being told. And it, it does cause some issues, I think, down the uh, down the road. It, it angers people breaks up friendships and families. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's so I, I, I wanted to point to a stat here. Uh, the National Institute of Mental Health gov. If anybody wants to check this out uh, for 2022 reported that prevalence of mental illness in 2022 was 19.86% of adults in the country that were experiencing some level of mental illness. That's almost 20% of our population that experiences some level of mental illness. And I'm wondering if those statistics are people that realized it and admitted they're having issues or or people that weren't aware that they were having issues. Now, 2022, we're just coming out of the pandemic and everything else. Right. But you guys very well know because you've been doing a great job with this series. There's a lot of people out there who are suffering from mental health issues uh, and need help and either don't realize it or won't admit it to themselves. It's and a that's a large part of the population. Yeah. Silent struggle. Yeah. And, and to put it in context, 19.86% of the population roughly translated into 50 million people, Americans, fellow Americans. Oh, man, that, that's a lot of people, too many. So yesterday in the news, I don't know if you guys got to see the local news. We saw a police chase. Did you get to see that? A uh, yeah, guy jumps into a van uh, and it was reported across the news. I mean, the, it came out that the reporters, I believe, were saying – the subject who was in the van had jumped in, into a van, sold in the van. He was possibly naked, driving south on I-95. When I saw it, I saw a phenomenal pit maneuver by the troopers, FHP. Think about the courage behind that. You're going 60, 70 miles an hour, and a trooper gets up there and pits the, the van. The van does a 360. The trooper loses his front end of his vehicle, and the van continues. But ultimately, the subject bails out, right? Mm -hmm. and police take him into custody. But that comes on the heels of a uh, the reports of the 13-year-old that's still playing in the news in Hialeah who supposedly stabbed his mother. Well, actually stabbed his mother to death. And the officers that responded to that scene. Also on the heels of another, a number of other incidents in Broward, the county that you live in, Manny. There was a lady who apparently robbed a Publix bank, um, a public store, supermarket. And she threatened that to blow up herself because she said that she had a bomb on herself. Mm -hmm. and, she, and then the police went and got her. And, the, and then the list goes on of incidents that are playing out in the media on a day-to-day -day basis. But those are, those are incidents that are impacting our law enforcement and our, and our community. How do you think that's playing out in their lives? 
How do you think that's impacting them? Well, look, you you guys are both law enforcement. Again, I thank you for 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 what you did for our communities. But we we've asked, and I think I talked about this the other day on the show. We we've dumped everything, all of the ills of society, on our cops. There's a domestic violence incident. Let the cops deal with it. Someone's having a mental breakdown. Let the cops deal with it. Uh, we, we've asked the police to do everything that has nothing to do with law enforcement. And then when they aren't able to do it or they're not able to manage the situations the way somebody would like them to, we blame the cops. Um, this is a societal problem. This is something, and you guys will know, I'm not going to preach to you. Uh, this has happened over generations and generations I don't see any way that we're going to fix it now by having a mental health professional do ride-alongs with cops to these things. But at the very least, we need to have the conversation because being a cop, and I know this from having many of them who have been close friends, is tough enough to begin with. We saw uh, uh, what happened with, with, with the former chief, Freddie Ramirez, and I've known him. He's been on the show many, many times, used to be on it with me every week. And he jokes about the fact that he used to say that one day I'll deal with, you know, the demons and the stresses of the job. Well, he didn't expect the day to come that when it did. Um, and we can't keep doing this to our law enforcement. We also, I think, and and, and Dave, and both of you uh, were on my show to talk about this. We, we need to make it acceptable for not only law enforcement, but anybody in our society, men especially, though, I think, to say, need your help, man. Uh, I've got a problem. And maybe it's gotten a little bit better. You guys tell me. Um, but it's not anywhere near where it needs to be for the people that need the help to get it. What do you think? Well, we had Chief uh, Morales on the show. He talked proactively City about of Miami police getting, yeah. get, getting the checkup each month. That was that was courageous. That was very courageous at the top of an organization uh, is, is moving forward with, with this sort of, uh, you know, this sort of idea with, you know, it, it bears fruit is what I'm getting at. It, it's an example for all to follow. And, you know, we've, we've talked about this as well too. I mean, if somebody has a broken arm and you see them and you say, well, what happened to you? I broke my arm. Well, are you going to get it fixed? Nah, it'll heal itself. No, it won't. And we would look at people a lot if they did that. Here we don't know what's going through somebody's mind. A lot of times it's up to family, friends, and the person themselves to say, listen, I'm going to be proactive. I Something's not right. I got to go, and I got to take care of it. We're reading now uh, with, with new reports now that the airline industry with pilots is going through something similar, mm -hmm. and their concerns are the same as maybe police concerns as well. If I go to get help, am I going to be grounded? If I'm a cop, I go to get some help. Are they going to take away my firearm and – I can't work off duty or anything like that. It'll be a financial issue for me and my family. So there's a lot of things that weigh in here. Uh, you know, we use the physical, the arm. Mm. That's not going to hold you back. Getting the mental health can hold you back. And I think we have to change. I think we're working on it. And thank you to Manny, too, for being here to change that paradigm. It is a strength to get help, not a weakness. Absolutely. So changing mindsets and the cultures, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the reason why we brought up police officers and we're doing a heavy emphasis on police is because they're a microcosm of the community, right? Yeah. They're our brothers, sisters, neighbors, friends. Um, and even though the majority of the people in the community only know police officers by seeing them as they pass in cars or, or in the, what they see in the public, but they really don't have a personal interaction. But what they don't realize is that they're as human as – they are, right, as the average civilian is. So we wanted to personalize police officers to draw the parallels that many members in our community suffer. And it, it is, as David said, and I think you said, it is a strength to seek help. Yeah. But how do we change these mindsets? Manny, do you see the media being a little more, more attuned to the fact that they need to play a bigger role here in reporting more responsibly? <laughs> uh, I only wish, look, we, we, you brought it up earlier. Generally, uh, everything that we see in the news these days is bad, whether it be the, the chase or a young man accused of, of murdering his mother, another mass shooting. The next one is right around the corner, right? Uh, there's no question Sorry. about that. Sorry. Um, you're the law enforcement. Let me ask you this because I see it in the news every single day locally is, is a shooting in a high crime area news. Should that be reported? Um, I, as a guy who's been in, in the media, in news, 
I don't think that's news, but you see it reported, sometimes leading the story every day in our local newscasts because they might have good pictures or video, right? They might have uh, pictures of a body bag, you know, the yellow tarp uh, on the ground, or they might have, you know, somebody saying this guy had harassed me and, and I knew he was going to snap. Is that news? Does that benefit the community? Um, and I think it's something that more and more in the media need to ask themselves whether things like that benefit the community if it is legitimate news to report, because I don't see the benefit of it. Interesting. I can see both sides to it. And and what maybe as a testament on society, if it gets to that point, have we gotten that callous that the taking of another life, even in a high crime area, isn't worth talking about. Mm. Now it's I, worth talking about, but I'm I'm asking if it's news. If you have an area of the community where there's constantly gun violence happening. Is that something that should be amplified so other people that aren't familiar with it just think, well, this is, you know, I mean, crime is running rampant in South Florida when in legitimate, when legitimately it is not. There would be some areas that you would say, listen, we need to address it. I know a couple, a year or two ago in the summertime, because I was at the press conference where uh, Mayor Cava, there was, there was some shootings out of control. They were publicized. And an operation was put together. Director Ramirez uh, was there, uh, and it worked. I, 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 but no, you, to the point. Yeah, it, it is that constant bombardment again. I understand it. I, who does it benefit? That's a great question. And, and to that point, though, I mean, I, I look at it from a little bit different uh, stance. Is that there's so many criminal incidents, uh, person crimes, including shootings and murders that occur that that a lot of them don't get reported right so so the question is why are they occurring and how can we better deal with them to reduce the amount of crime in the communities look we had uh to be repetitive here for the for our audience we had judge stephen lifeman from the 11th circuit court from miami-dade county he's a pioneer in the mental health court uh evolution right um, locally and he is working on and has been working on for better 20 plus years building out and launching a facility that would be a one-stop shop place that people with mental health disorders minor mental health disorders that lead to crimes at the beginning stages can be a person can be dealt with better dealt with rather than putting them through the through the judicial process. And what he saw that, and part of that also includes training the officers and expanding the, the, the CIT training, um, mental health training for officers and awareness. And what he has seen quantifiably over the last 15, 20 years, where he has not been able to build out that facility yet, he has seen, or we have seen, a reduction of officer involved shootings we have seen an officer uh, officer involved incidents where where officers the in contact between officers and people who are unstable has gone down we've seen but what we haven't seen is a decrease in the criminality caused by people with serious mental health i think that piece of launching that that facility is going to be great for miami-dade county but yet we still don't have the political will for it because it hasn't been launched so, so why do you think that is? You're you're the politician. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I make a good politician. But I'll tell you <laughs> this uh, I like to think of myself as the citizen who just got frustrated with with a system that hasn't been working for me or for many of us. So I think we need to create greater public awareness of what of the true facts. Right. Politicians don't like the true facts to come out. Right. Because often it's uncomfortable to deal with them. I say, let's deal with the issues uncomfortable or comfortable, but let's deal with the issues. Let's take care of the people's issues. I think Judge Leifman and people like him who have been in that arena for a very long time are serving the community and really addressing the people's needs, in this case, criminal behavior through mental health is a good component. Training officers on how to better deal with um, those that they come across who have mental health disorders and recognizing the signs of what is crime and what is not is an incredible, incredible accomplishment and should be celebrated. And people need to be more aware of it. But we still have so much farther to go. And I think building relationships with personnel like yourself in the media is a start. 
We have to work collectively together in order to get this information out, in order to come up with better solutions. Look, we don't have the solutions, but I think we can together, we can come up with better way uh, outcomes, right? Deliver better outcomes. That's just my rant. Sorry. All right. Listen. Uh, speaking of rants, I mean, you're 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 talking uh, talking straight from Manny with his rants, which are <laughs> which are always great, and always well appreciated. <laughs> you know, the media is, is a medium between when you know between the populace and what has to be conveyed something going back to something you said manny a little while ago and and, and that's going to keep me thinking later it is a good point about the reporting of it um of issues like that you know in high crime areas but then we go we, we on the national level again and it's just I, I i use the word funny it's not funny but for lack of a better word that they keep reporting these mass shootings but the, what they what they want to soften it is say yeah but you know what we're not going to name the person we're not going to name the person as to give this person, you know, the popularity. Yeah, but you keep showing it over and over again. I, I think naming the person is not a big deal. But there is that conscious effort, I think, in the national media. They, they should do something to try to make it look like they're not pushing this out constantly. I don't think it works, but it's, it's, it's just interesting how that plays out. And mm -hmm. it's all the channels. Yeah, I'm not gonna, we're not going to name them. We're not going to show his picture to publicize it. Guy just, you know, took out 15 people. What's the difference? Yeah, I think we should be tough on crime, period. Tough yep. on crime, period. Listen, we have almost three and a half minutes to go on on the on this particular show. Um, we know this conversation must continue. Manny would love to continue the conversation with you. I think you add a tremendous piece to this episode of this series. What are your thoughts? Final thoughts, please share with us. Give us something inspirational here that we can go by. Look, I, I, I try to be, I think, like like both of you, and, and Dave knows this very well because I'm thankful to have him a, as a pretty regular listener. I I try and be optimistic, not only about our community here in, in, in South Florida, but about the future of our country. And the fact that we're even discussing these issues about mental health, and we're acknowledging the fact that somebody doesn't go out and commit a mass shooting uh, without having certain mental health issues, I think that's an accomplishment. I think we've come really, really far in the last five years, in the last 10 years, and absolutely in the last 20 years, even having this public discussion. You see suicide prevention hotlines popping up. We've got a national one now. You see an attention to our members uh, of, of, of the military and veterans and the fact that we're losing so many of them on a daily basis, that's getting reg regular attention from our politicians on a national level. And that's a good thing. This isn't a problem. And I know I don't have to tell you guys that we're going to solve uh, in a week or a month or a year. But the fact that it's even being discussed publicly the way we're doing now and what you guys are doing every week, I think that's another step in a positive direction. So if I can offer anybody any hope, uh, are the fact that, yeah, these issues are becoming less and less taboo to talk about, whether it be here locally or whether it be on a national level by the media and by those people that need to be aware of it so something could get accomplished. Thank you. Manny? Um, Chief? I think he summed it up great. Uh, again, I'll repeat, it's an honor to have uh, Manny Munoz here. It's good to see him in person, not just on a radio, which we can't see, but uh just some solid information being put out here. And I, I think the, the bottom line is we're, tack, we're, we're tackling it. We are addressing it. We're not putting it aside in, in a box away somewhere. Mm -hmm. And hopefully more and more people will jump on and say, listen, we, we can make great strides right now. You know, little by little, but straight great strides. Go back to what you said before, nearly 20% of adults in America. The, the stat you gave earlier. That's all you need to know. We got to do something. And we must do better by our families, by our community, and by ourselves. Uh, Manny, can't thank you enough. Uh, for those of you out there listening, if you're in South Florida uh, and, and you're in crisis, find yourself in crisis, don't have anybody else to go see, uh, and you need attention, you dial 1-800-HELP-YOU. That's the mobile response team. They will come out and speak with you, help you. It's free of charge, totally anonymous. If you find yourself suicidal, pick up the phone no matter where you're at, dial 988 or just seek help. You're not alone. There are resources out there for you. Remember, if you seek help, you have a great chance of being helped beyond the dark point. To the Millers, Miami's community news team, Andres Pena, our producer. Thank you, Michael Miller, Grant Miller, 
and everybody that makes this show happen. We also thank you, my, my colleague, my guest. This has been a show. Thank you. 